I would like to start off with comforting you, if it starts, it does, because this speech is not, at least not only about money. What it is about is creating a new, fair and better world of data for everyone, civilians and firms alike. This is Magdalena Kuneva. Um, she was a European commissioner a couple of years ago and she said, data is the oil of the 21st century. So if this is true, why aren't we all filthily rich yet? The next two guys have something to do with that. The Zuck, Larry Page, and their companies, Facebook, Apple, and other companies as well, Google, uh, Amazon, they've been building a world of digital silos. They've been building digital islands, empires for their own, based on our data. And it's not only private firms that have been doing that. It's public sector as well. So governments have been storing our tax data, traffic data, heating, electricity, waste disposal, stuff like that. So where does it lead to? Four things. First one, monopolies. This is the gang of four. The Daltons, Joe, Averill, and the other two that I always forget. In the modern world, it's Amazon, Facebook, Google, um, and Amazon, I guess. Um, so they've been creating monopolies, but also there is an unequal distribution of wealth. Um, they've been building the oil refineries um, of the modern day uh, age, but we supply the oil. We should be getting compensated for that. It's not only about um, private firms, it's also about sharing data which will yield results. What can we do with sharing data? We could, for instance, um, trace traffic patterns. We could use data to see which medication is working or not. We could make um, um, we could make forecast of where there will be an epidemic or not. And the most important thing is that um, we have lost control of our data. So that's nothing new. Actually, Sandy Pendlin, the professor, coined the term New Deal on Data already in 2007 in an essay. And he made a couple of principles. You can read them yourself. But what it is about, basically, is that we should be having a Swiss bank account for our data. We are determining what's happening with our data, who has access to it, and where we store it. That's it. The fourth principle that he added is that this new deal on data should be promoting the sharing of big data for the use of the common good. So the examples that I gave just previous with medication and epidemics and stuff like that. That's a really good start, but I would like to extend it a bit because my search data should be mine as well. So I could hand it over to not only Google, but also to DuckDuckGo or to Bing. So they would have the opportunity to provide the same service as Google um, does. Same goes for my shopping data. So if I'm searching on Amazon, I would like to have Zalando have the same data so they can also give the same level of service. So we would create kind of an even playing field and more competition. As said, it's not only about the private sector firms, but it's also about the government who are st storing um, a lot of data of us. So that's why I came up with this framework to make it a bit more complete. The three players over there, firms, civilians, um, uh, and the authorities, and there are three levels of storing your data. Default is that we share everything. There's only a limited amount of uh, uh, data that keeps private from firms, authorities, and civilians. We can share a lot anonymous. For instance, I would share my health data with universities for research purposes, and I would, only, I would share my medical data completely with my general practitioner. And this new data framework would achieve the aims that are listed up here. You can read them for yourself. And that's what I wanted to talk about with you today. I know it's a very abstract um, subject, uh, we didn't make a lot of progress since 2007, but there are a couple of things that you can do. Visit freeyourdata.org, which tries to achieve change uh, in a European context. I wrote an essay at neuesignale.de slash new deal. For people who are interested in earning shitloads of money and redistributing wealth, I can highly recommend the book Who Owns the Future by Jaron Lanier. And I would like to ask you, at the end, think about what kind of digital life you want to leave in the next couple of years. And now grab your smartphones 
and share your photos and your thoughts about this uh, uh, speech and enjoy the rest of the conference. Have a great night. Thanks for having me.